Boom. We are live to the pleasure chesters. Patreons. Big D, what's good with you? Oh man. Holy Toledo. I uh I, I don't know. Crack. And it's a, a water crack. Lake. I'm not drinking. Hey, you know. <laughs> Although today, if just if you're certain people on certain teams, you might want to drink. You may want to, yeah. If you're a Giants fan, if you're a Vikings fan, there may be some drinking going on um, at at work. That lower desk drawer may be getting popped open a little <laughs> bit, man. Huh? It's, what's good, man? It's Absolutely. uh, it's uh, it's the beginning. Here we go, rock and roll. Yeah. Universes like are the- changing. Yeah, this is like the Forrest Gump with free agency. You know, you never know what you're going to get. Some days, sometimes it's everybody goes back and there's not a whole lot going on. It's slow. Yeah. And then bang, today was just like, doom, 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 doom. Now, I haven't seen the contracts for Barkley and, and Jacobs yet. Um, I haven't so, seen Jacobs. Barkley's at three years, 37.75. Yeah. So basically 38 million. But um, I don't know what the right the ins and outs are. Knowing Howie, it's, uh, you know. There's, right. And that's that's part of being early on it is you, you kind of don't know some of the ins and outs and some things might change. Um, yeah. But for the most part, me and Big D had some time today. So we wanted to hop on here, talk about all this free agency. Uh, Deku says, how am I supposed to accomplish anything at work today? I mean, I think a lot of people are feeling that way. J. Mike, what up? Good to see you guys. Threw it out live to the patrons just to see if anybody was, you know, procrastinating at work or slackers at home like me and Big D are today. For real. Um, But let's let's start off with Kirk, because that's probably one of the bigger ripples in the league quarterback wise. And then we'll go Jacobs or Saquon Jacobs and touch on some of those running backs. So obviously, Kirk goes to uh, leaves Minnesota, goes to Atlanta. And I mean, this is this is the only fit that Atlanta needed, like all the talk of Russell maybe going there or Fields going there like. That's not fit for what they want to do as an offense, right? They just got the McVay, Shanahan kind of tree guys over there. They want to go three wides, more McVay uh, rather. They want to go three wide. They need they need a a Stafford or at very least a golf to operate an offense like that. And it's no slight to Justin Fields, but like that's just not what he is. The offense needs to fit around his skill set. This offense and what they want to do fits around Kirk's skill set. So I think it's ginormous for Atlanta Falcons and all of your Falcons you've been holding and praying for in fantasy. Yeah. I mean, I I think it's official. Kirk is the goat of all time when it comes to quarterback free agency. (laughs) Like the dude is just a market market magician, man. He just, he knows where to go and, and where to land. And this is just, just, it's just, tremendous for him and and for the Falcons I believe uh, the I mean I, I was a little surprised on you know and again we don't know all the details I was a little surprised on the the amount of years that they were adding on I'm, I'm thinking that's probably partially why he he went you know um, mm-hmm. got a three-year instead of a two-year type of deal with the age and the injury and um, you know that's uh, but man man it's rocking it's it's and not great news for Minnesota um could be in the long run, but it, right now in the short term, not great. But for for the Falcons, like you said, I mean, if you just look at the offense um, uh, top down, right, wide receivers. Um, I mean, JJ is best of the game. You know, he, there's 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 no competing with him. But then after JJ, you know, Addison is is good um, to great, um, still still unproven. But you look at the rest of the offense in Atlanta, and you know that Hawk was going to be injured for at least a portion of the year. Who knows how long that injury was going to go. Um, and then you look at the divisions, right? I mean, like I would mm. rather play in Atlanta's division than, than in Minnesota's division for sure. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's stellar for Kirk. It's stellar for his, uh, fantasy value. I think it's all, all, all indications for all the players there. It's going to, you know, it's definitely going to rocket them up a little bit and man, it's a, it's a great, great day to be a, a Falcon fan and, a, mm. and a Kirk owner. Yeah, the uh, the the division is a good point there. To to go there might be a little easier, little little path of least resistance there because uh, North getting stronger seemingly with with potentially Caleb coming there and potentially Jordan Love being really really good, um, mm-hmm. and then obviously Detroit is is you know no longer just a a speed bump in the division. It's they're, they're now kind of the kings at this point. Uh, so. You go down, you got Baker and Carr to deal with, and Carolina is is a mess. So right. that, that's pretty solid. So that's I think that's a good point. Interesting to see what the money is on Kirk. I, I didn't see what it was and what the guarantees were. Like, if I were him, I don't like to talk about another man's money, but like I would have taken a little less 
just so I can try to win here. I, like you said, he's the goat at free agency and getting all this guaranteed money. Yeah. Why don't you take just a couple million more each year and be able to get one more piece or, or retain two or three more guys because they want an extra mill or two. You know, you do you, you should get all the money you should get, I guess. But mm -hmm. at, at some point when you want to be a winner, like, you know, and I hate to mention, Tom, but Tommy took less a lot of the time. Um, and, it, you know, he's fine. Um, Kirk's doing fine. Peyton was one of those guys that Peyton Manning never took less, really. You know, he was always of the mindset like, no, you're going to pay me what I'm worth. Um, and, I, you know, I'm not going to begrudge anybody for anything. But, you know, I, if I was Kirk, I might have taken a little less. So we'll see what the deal is. I haven't seen it. This information just kind of came across. What are you excited about over there, Big D? Oh, sorry, man. It's live. So uh, Patrick Queen coming to Seattle. Woo! Not fantasy relevant, but Seahawks. It's not relevant. fantasy relevant, but you had that Seahawks hat on, so I had to go put the Niners hat on. I, I yeah. couldn't be misrepresented. That's uh, all right. You're yeah. always over there. But we got a little yin and yang. I got my I got my throwback Sonic uh, um, Seahawks hat on, just so nobody says anything about the Ducks, because I will <laughs> absolutely come unglued. <laughs> so. Yeah. So you mentioned a little bit about how this, you know, could rocket up some some ADP for these guys. Right now, we have Drake London going four six. Um, around Brandon Ayuk and Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill's a little bit above him. Do you think this like kind of separates him a little bit? I, I think he probably about stays where he is because you were. I think that was maybe hopeful drafting, um, but because I, I, you know, I don't see him going above Nico um, or going going really above you know Pittman or Devonta Smith too terribly far. I, but it should it could net you know a, a bump for him, so he could maybe as much as a third round or a, a whole round move moving up into the third. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, for London, I, I definitely could see that. I mean, I think the hype, the hype has been there for him. It's kind of been building as a, as um and in the sleeper community of, of fantasy football, there's been a lot of London talk. And so, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I, uh, it would be hard for me to pull that off, but honestly, if I'm a competing team, um, it'd be hard or if I'm building a, comp a competitor and a startup type of thing. But uh, I think an unestablished team, I, I think I would almost be willing to take that shot if I if London's value is lower than some of those guys and get a little little juice on top of that. You know, if I can get a I don't know what that value looks like right now because I haven't, you know, haven't really done it. And the news just broke, so it's probably not going to be much. But after this settles down a little bit and as we get closer to that to that rookie draft, you might be able to pull something off and, and get yeah. him for, for a decent, decent clip. So yeah, it looks I mean, like uh, Duco saying the Kirk deal is 180 million with uh, 180 million, 100 of it guaranteed over four years. Is that right? Uh, three years, I believe. Yeah. All right. Well, Oh no, for over four years. You're right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's probably a three year. I'm, I'm assuming most of the time they set them up, structure it that way. It's yeah. It says four, um, but it's really three. Like you said, in an existing league, I think I think anything right now in, in super flex tight end premium, anything out of the one seven, I would probably trade to get uh, Drake London. Oh, yeah. So that that Brian Thomas down uh, area, <clears throat> I think I would take a shot on on Drake London there. I agree. Yeah. All right. And then, you know, obviously Kyle Pitts, a favorite of this show. Some people have disregarded him and 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 threw him away and discarded him uh, into the trash. And there's no way he could ever be good. Uh, but, you know, now we're about to find out. Right. This yep. is uh, this is what we wanted. This is, you know, I, I do expect to see a little bit of a rise, uh, especially in tight end premium with Kyle Pitts value. I think that's going to, you know, ricochet back up into that probably fourth round where we've been seeing him early six, late, late fifth kind of hanging around. I think this is going to rejuvenate the, uh, you know, the pits gang as you know, if, if you don't like somebody you're it's, it's take lock on somebody. Cause God forbid you had, you gave anybody any time to do it, you know, you know figure out the league. If, yeah. if you're still hanging on, like, yeah, I you call take lock. It's fine. I still like Kyle Pitts. I, I still think Kyle Pitts is awesome. Um, really? you know, just, just use properly and a quarterback to throw to him. Um, you know, don't maybe, maybe put him in as, you know, a tight end for the most part and stop putting him in the slot. Like, he's what, not, what? Yeah, you know, <laughs> Holy shit. you can run him out of the slot here and there, but <laughs> take the mismatch, man. You know, yeah, for real. Um, yeah. Pitts, so. Pitts is, uh, you know, I mean, if you were like us and we were a stain, you know, a, a pit stain and, uh, and hanging around and just holding on to him, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's wheels up too. I mean, that, um, and then Bijan too. I mean, the check down, um, the check down from uh, Addison wasn't super efficient. And and I have to dig into the the actual metrics. But um, I love the fact that um, you know with Bijan there uh, opening it up, 
it's going to open up the offense down the field for both London and Pitts. It's going to going to create um, some checkdown scenarios, um, and um, it'll be interesting what they do at that that second wide receiver spot. Um, yeah, you know that that could be that could that I think that'll help us as fantasy owners kind of understand what their concepts are, at least from a a, a very macro point of view of of um, of schemes and that. But uh, but as of right now, the way it sits, yeah, Pitts Pitts is uh, up. Uh, Bijan, I, I don't know how many were yeah. out on Bijan because right. it's Bijan, right? But but you definitely his his value got got spiked with the signing and and the and the years. So it's. Uh, it's awesome, man. It's, yeah, it's great. I'm I'm mm-hmm. really excited. I'm excited for Atlanta. That's be a fun team to watch. I like I like Kirk. Um, you know, I don't Bijan's value probably can't go a terrible amount higher. He's already basically the RB one. Um, might might maybe move back to the end of the first round for some people, but you're still taking quarterbacks at that point. Right. Um, and, and maybe somebody might even prefer him over to one of those wide receivers potentially, because we know when a running back gets going, they can score. Um, you know almost uncomparable points uh, and obviously Justin Jefferson and Chase could do that too. But um, you know, there was a day in our day uh, where running backs just touched it a ton and, and scored a million fantasy points, uh, which yeah. you saw with CMC this year, um, kind of the throwback. So uh, Bijan stabilized at the very least, you know, of not, yeah. not really, I don't think you have a terrible worry. Uh, if you were worried, I'm not really sure, you know, what to tell you, but you shouldn't yeah. be now. And there's a good offensive line there. Um, right. And this is a this is, you know, don't get it twisted. This still a, it's not Arthur Smith, but it's still a, a team that look at how much better the Rams operated with, you know, a, a tried and true running game and Kyron that you had to fear all of a sudden, you know, that when when Kyron was missing out of that rotation, you know, little seemed like they weren't quite the same team. Kyron gets back. They get a kind of a more of a workhorse that they can lean on. Um, and that that McVay system ops or, operates a whole lot better. Deku says that that um, Kirk has some ties back to Raheem Morris and Zach Robinson um, at, at, at points. So um, not sure if that's true, but I'll take him for his word. He seems like a smart guy. Um, mm-hmm. So let's, uh, let's keep it moving to the next signing here. You, you good? Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on. All right. Uh, obviously Saquon Barkley just signed him with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that's obviously huge for the running backs. Don't matter crowd. Uh, last year you were vindicated this year. They're the, you know, pretty, pretty hot tickets. And maybe some of that is predicated by, they don't see that in the draft this year that, that they, they get these dominant uh, good players as far as um, what we've been seeing in some of the past years. And it's maybe a bit more of a one B style running back draft kind of coming up here, but you know, the running backs got decent deals. It's not 15 million uh, like, you know, we were at one point the Alvin Kamara's and and Dalvin Cooks and and Christian McCaffrey's, but uh, that Saquon deal didn't look like it was terrible. And then you know the other Swift and and Pollard got okay money for especially who they are and and kind of what they did last year, right? So um, Saquon going to Philly, we have questions of of that offensive line just a little bit. It seemed to seem to kind of not be what it once was near the end of the season, although nothing in Philly was what it once was. Um, so you lose Jason Kelsey, but you gain just a ridiculous asset here. Um, and Barkley has been by low all off season for me. I don't know where this is going to take Saquon's bark or Saquon's value. Um, when you look at it, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of room for him to go up a, a, a terrible amount more, but I mean, he he could easily shoot up a round or two here with this signing on a good team with good weapons around him. They need to get back to being a run first kind of team. And this is a guy that, you know, they don't have to take off the field. And, you know, is he CMC by any means? No, but you see what CMC can do to an offense um, and Philly right there. I think you could take a little pressure off of Jalen with with a reliable running back. And Saquon's been when healthy and the team playing any semblance of decent football has been a really, really good player. You just need Saquon to stay healthy for the Eagles. And and this is, um, I think, a good signing for them on somebody who usually doesn't break the bank on, especially running backs. So interesting, interesting turn here. The 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 heel turn of running backs is is interesting. You know, it really is, man. Yeah, this this is an exciting one. Um, 
I don't know. The first thing I thought about is um, any giant, giant fans I have in any of my fantasy leagues that have Saquon, I think you can get a pretty decent discount on yeah. going to the go into the Eagles. But um, the second thing I thought about was the third eye blind song. How's it going to be, you know, um, when you don't know me anymore? Um, and that's <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm I've been and, and, and I'm excited for Barkley. I feel like the Giants have have struggled Um to say the least, uh, since he's been there. And I think the Eagles, um, this is a great pressure release valve for, for Hertz. I think it's a great, um, get that offensive line, some cohesiveness with Kelsey gone, you know, helping play. I don't, I don't know how that's going to affect because Kelsey was a veteran man. And, and the center is the one that helps, um, solidify protections and stuff. And I don't, I don't know Hertz well enough from a X's and O's perspective to know how that's going to look. But I do know that Barkley is, um, you know, one of those players that, he's going to be there to to help release release some of that pressure and from a fantasy perspective i mean you know you, you look at Miles Sanders two years ago and what he did um, down the stretch for Philly, um, and I could see a very similar usage from from Barkley's for for Barkley, and obvi- obviously and honestly, Barkley is a better player. So I mm-hmm. think it's I think it's wheels up. I think it's a better fit for Barkley than than the Giants. Um, uh, just just from the amount of weapons and the way that offense is is run and coached. Um, and um, I don't know, man, it's 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 a tough day to be a Giants fan, but a great day to be an Eagles fan <laughs> again. And 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 again, like you said, if you're a Berkeley fan, I mean, I I I don't think that this um, I don't think this skyrockets his value, but I, I definitely it, it definitely probably helps it more than it hurts it. Um, if that makes yeah, no, so, it, ha- it has to. I mean, obviously yeah. you had Saquon and Jacobs sliding down a lot of these drafts and they were my favorite buys and you can just get two awesome running backs in the late sixth round, mid six. I think that'll probably at least transition to more so being early six, late fifth yeah. um, for, for Barkley here because you knew they were going to be free agents. You just didn't know if they were going to resign or, or where they were going to end up. So that can, you know, you end up in a bad spot. That could be a bummer. And there, there is kind of, Maybe one of those down the line here that we could talk about. And even Josh Jacobs next up here, we, we could talk about that a little bit. Um, but yeah. Saquon landing in a in a wide open backfield where, you know, I just I don't think it's going to be played like the Eagles have typically played their backfield. You know, Swift had long stretches of being the guy there last year, but then there would be times where they'd rotate other guys. And now they're right. going to rotate a few other guys in to kind of keep him fresh. But you're bringing Barkley to town. He can he can do he's a triple threat. Uh, kind of guy you just need him healthy um, and he can put up fantasy points in a hurry um, and really be the catalyst for your team you said pressure release valve I think that's a good way to good way to put it and I think that's huge for Philadelphia and kind of rebuilding their identity of of what they do and and who they are I feel he just he just fits that that I feel like he fits that team really really well what they do how they want to do it he's kind of from that area as well so he didn't have to leave you know He's, he's from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. We played him against him in high school football. Um, so that's not terribly far away from there. He was, you know, so stays in the area around there, kind of around family. So I think good move for Saquon Barkley. Got some decent cash and then gets to go to potential. Now, now the Eagles will probably all of a sudden be the dumpster fire of the of the, of the NFC East. But like, I'm, I'm glad he, I hate the Eagles, but I'm glad he gets to go um, somewhere and have a chance to, get a taste of some winning seasons in a winning culture, you know, cause I feel like he stayed positive and he's been kind of the giants, the face of that franchise for a little while and has, has gotten no, um, no real reward for it except for uh, everybody hates running backs. <laughs> so, yeah, for real. I, I feel like there might be a, a New Jersey in your, um, in, in your house, house? Uh, pretty soon. Yeah. I don't know what's going maybe, on there. <laughs> maybe my, my wife doesn't know about this yet. So, Oh boy. She's at work. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's let's slide over to Josh Jacobs. So he's probably the next big signing. That that, Man, that, that one was a shocker. Today. Woo! I that one shocker. was a shocker. I I thought that that you would work out potential uh, to, for him to come back to the Raiders. He just seems like he would fit with what AP kind of wants to do with that team more moving forward with kind of what their identity is and is going to be just maybe they just didn't want to quite give him the amount of cash that he wanted um yeah so obviously zamir white gets left over there and in uh or he was tired of losing to kansas city (laughs) true (laughs) um so zamir gets left as kind of the guy there i mean i I can't imagine you're going to be able to run away and sell him because i don't think anybody's buying that they're going to be that he's going to be the guy in 
Oakland moving forward. I don't hate Zamir. I think Zamir is a good player, but likely to add somebody. But if you could sell, wouldn't be a bad time to at least try. You could uh, see what's going on over there. But as far as Josh Jacobs, it seems like from what we've seen in the coming last hour or so that Aaron Jones is going to be on the team and it's going to be Josh Jacobs and Aaron Jones. No, I think, I think they're, um, I think there's been reports that they've informed him that uh, informed Aaron Jones that he's going to be cut. Um, oh, well. So that's uh, that's an interesting change of scenery. Um, maybe maybe Aaron Jones goes to to Nevada and and puts on the. They just swap places, you know. Like Aaron Jones goes to be a Raider and and. Um, yeah, because Jacobs he will goes, be. With yeah, J. Mike says Aaron Jones getting cut. Yeah, um, yes. So. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it. I, I don't, I don't quite get the move uh, from a NFL perspective, um, but I'm not. I'm not. I don't hate the, the the landing spot, especially with Aaron Jones gone, AJ Dillon's gone. I mean that that team has shown that they can support running backs. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I it, this one kind of flabbergasted me. Honestly, this one's the most shocking. Um, deal for me so far this year is it is 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 josh jacobs deciding to go there he must have had some indication that they were going to move on from aaron jones because i don't see why he would land there if they weren't right and then uh and then for aaron jones i mean i i i've been trying to buy him cheap all off season because he felt like he was in a pretty secure spot and obviously not so much obviously now not so much so now he's he's going to go out into the wild and and test the market and yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. It's uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I'm still, I'm still um, processing this one in my, in my plums. I'm trying to, trying to really get a, a good feel on, on how this is gonna fit and, and does this raise? Because Jacobs was going, man. Every draft I saw him, um, you know, all the mocks, he was going. It felt like later, later and later, like he was down a couple picks or a half a round. Yeah, last, uh, every yeah, six was, ten was where the where the ADP was for him. Yeah, the, over this last run of ADP for us. So yeah, that's, that's crazy. It was and always I, crazy. That yeah. one's definitely going up because you're getting a year younger from Saquon as well uh, at Josh Jacobs. And, you know, people love to hate Jacobs, but that's a guy who's basically finished as an RB1 every mm -hmm. healthy season that he's basically had in the league. Um, yeah. And just same reason why I was buying low. I'm going to continue to buy low. I think it might might have gotten a little bit more expensive, um, but Aaron Jones out of there. Once again, we kicked it off with uh, kind of a McVay uh, Shanahan kind of scheme going on over here. That's the cut that that their head coach for the Packers is from the floor. Uh, and so, you know, they want a good running game. We saw uh, when when they've been really effective, that's when they've what they've been just being able to lean on you in the run game um, and then kind of cut you up with with Jordan Love a little bit. Um and Aaron Jones has been missing some time. Josh Jacobs has missed a little bit of time here and there too, but for the most part, plays nicked. Um, maybe kind of gives them something that they were using two guys for. You're getting kind of Josh Jacobs to to do what both of those guys could do a little bit. I think you can lean on Jacobs. He could be your workhorse, um, similar to what the Eagles kind of just did. You got it. You got a back that now you can you can count on. You can leave in the game. Um, I thought the Packers O line was pretty good without having Bakhtiari, you know, all of pretty much last year. Um, so they can continue to address that line maybe a little bit. And uh, I mean, this was a, this was a team that kind of turned it around second half of the season as Jordan Love got comfortable. And, and I think having a good run game is going to keep Jordan Love, you know, nice and even doesn't have to do too much, get too big, get too small, keep bringing him along, not, not put it all on, on Jordan Love. Not that Aaron Jones wasn't and couldn't do that. Um, but like you said, bit in, bit intriguing. But I think it's hey, we 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 got a good guy here. We can rely on him and yeah. um, you know, lean on him. Yeah, I mean, it's a smart play. Sorry, I was just I was checking my rankings from I, the last time I kind of went through the running backs was in December, probably early December, late November, and I had Jacobs as ten um, on my on my personal rankings, which is a lot higher than consensus, I know. But now I'm like, man, is he? He's. I don't think he's going to move from there. But I'm like, I'm just looking around the couple names, you know, up and down, and like, Kyron Williams, Barkley, Etienne. Um, uh, and then below him, I had Walker Montgomery and, uh, Javante Williams at the time. And so, um, 
I don't think he's going to move much, but I think that um, consensus probably is going to bring him consensus as in, um, you know, not saying I'm the smartest. That's not what I'm right. trying to get at here. I'm just saying that I was really high on Josh Jacobs. I think yeah. you were too. Um, but I, I think we're going to see a, a market movement on him. And, and I definitely, like you were saying, now that it's starting to sink in, I think that six round capital on startups is probably going to go at yeah, least a round up, up um, yeah. maybe, maybe two. So, yeah, I think you're at least getting a round up because I mean, ET's fallen back down into that early five. So I think he'll kind of probably settle in somewhere around those guys. Um, ET's, probably you know a little younger than him but et spent that extra year in in college so right. um he's a hair on the older side uh so i do i do really like the signing i think it'll it'll help the market for josh jacobs it's bad for me because i was buying buying low so he just maybe got a little more expensive but i'll keep investing and we know yeah. that right now that running backs aren't the currency for a lot of people it's a when you're going through these drafts on in a startup when you're building you build a certain way i've had a lot of success recently with building um you know i don't like to necessarily call it the productive struggle because i usually build it with kind of a trap door in there of like i think i could compete year one and if if i do then then i could add a piece or do this and if not i can sell some of these other pieces and and in a year be basically ready to compete because i have Basically, I drafted a bunch of assets that I know everybody wants. I might not even love them, but I know what the currency currently is. Running backs aren't that. Um, so I think you could probably still there's going to be plenty of people who still don't care that Josh Jacobs really signed at the Packers and is, you know, chance to uh, reprise his role as kind of what he's been the entire time that he's been in the league, which is a little slept on and really good. Um, so uh hopefully which i don't think it'll matter the the running backs are getting paid there's some movement maybe we can get a little bit more love back towards the running back position but probably not because um all the smartest beauty contest people in the world they, that's that's not the uh, and and look the smart play isn't necessarily running back if you're not ready to go because they do lose value and and they're not the the centerpiece of the marketplace like they used to be so understood but sometimes it's okay to not win the beauty pageant of roster construction um, and lose a little value to actually try to have a competitive roster. Um, and I think Josh Jacobs can really, and Saquon Barkley can really help you out with that. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree. I, uh, Scratch in the comments said that Lance is going to Minnesota. I think that's just, he wants Lance to go to Minnesota now that oh, Kirk's okay. out of there. So but I, I do too. I think that would be great, um, but uh, yeah, I haven't, haven't seen exciting. anything. Yeah, that would be my awesome. Lance. My Lance shares are like I'm getting closer and closer. I have to take off my taxi squad, man. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> well, if, I don't know. I, they must have picked up his fifth year option as far as uh, I think they did. The Cowboys yeah. Go. So it'll be interesting to see where some of these other quarterbacks kind of land. We saw Mac Jones get traded for a sixth round pick. We saw Lance get traded last year for a fourth, I think. Yeah, I think um, it ended up being a fourth. Yeah. So, you know, somebody loses a quarterback or needs a quarterback or the carousel falls short, you know, the Jag or somebody gets hurt in season, the Jags could be in a decent position to get an extra draft pick, you know, move it from a sixth to a fifth for Mac. And maybe, you know, same thing with Lance, maybe even before the season with Lance, we'll have a little more intrigue of, Hey, somebody might pay you, you know, a three, four swap or something, or, or at least even money on um, the fourth round pick that you, that you gave the 49ers or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, so I don't hate that. And I would, I'd love to see Lance go to Minnesota. I don't know what that would do for my Justin Jefferson stock. And I don't know what Kirk leaving does to your Justin Jefferson stock. So that's an interesting, um, you know, I'm sure Justin Jefferson doesn't want to stick around somebody wh somewhere where there's a quarterback in question, you know? Yeah. I think it was Neil recently asked in the, in the cords about, uh, I think it was like one Oh four and Olave or Justin Jefferson. And man, I was having a tough time, um, may have not been fully sober, but I was having a tough time, like <laughs> contemplating, is this good, bad, and you know, like not good, bad, like which side am I on? Like, and I'm like going into the whole like schematics of like, oh, well, if my team is this, this, and this, but now, like now that we know the Kirk's not going to be there, like, I don't know, it's getting, it's getting closer. So, um, not, not out on Justin Jefferson, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm just saying, yeah, yeah it's definitely... It's definitely interesting. So you want to stick around in the quarterback quarterback realm and talk about your fave, Russ? Uh, well, let's let's finish off the running backs real quick okay. before we before good. we bounce back. Um, let's let's go to the elephant in the room because both of us <laughs> like Tajay Spears, mm -hmm. um, and I think you you had to know, and we've said it on this show that there's no way the Titans are going into the into the season with. Tajay Spears being kind of one of the only guys on their roster they can count on from the running back position. But we 
didn't know exactly what that was going to be, but we certainly didn't. I didn't expect it to be another guy who they were going to pay decent cash to and and be a pretty marquee name. I was, you know, if Gus Johnson or um, who's uh, who's the guy who signed in uh, Donta Foreman or so, somebody mm-hmm. of that ilk that kind of does that different thing can be your first, second down smasher goal line, bit different than how right. stylistically how Tajay plays. You know, you think you're thinking. All right, that's cool. He's going to take some reps, take some load off Taji, but Taji's going to be the guy. Um, and I saw somebody, maybe it was the Dynasty Stock Exchange, that Corey guy was was touting, you know, moving moving Spears down because there was no way that it was going to be that. And I like, it's no disrespect to him, but I, I just, this notion uh, is basically just confirmation bias. You moved him down. Like he easily could have been somebody you didn't give a shit about that signed there. And then Tajay Spears was probably fairly priced in the market now, probably a little overpriced in the market. Because of Tony Pollard signing there, you know, and get, gets it wasn't just like Tony Pollard one year prove it deal. It was, I believe, three year same deal that Swift signed essentially. Yep, uh, I think. Um, and Pretty again, much. we're doing this hours as this is coming in, so there'll be more developing. We'll have more opinions on it. But you know, if you're not first, you're last. You know, it's better to be fat first than right. <laughs> you know, that's what that's, that's what I like to say. Um, so. J Mike says Tennessee to Pollard. He really likes it, especially for what the head coach wants to do and the O-line upgrade occurring. So yes, Titans got to upgrade the offensive line and they, you know, got, that has to be a priority. Uh, I think, believe they drafted, you know, that way last year, I could see them drafting again that way this year. You got Levis, you can kind of develop him. but what's nice with the two backs that they have they're I wouldn't say terribly contrasting style wise. Now, somebody who's real into exactly all that stuff might, might say they are, but I I think both of them operate well in an efficiency manner. Like we saw Pollard try to be the guy this year for whatever reason, it didn't work. And maybe it has nothing to do with anything. He just maybe wasn't right. Or wasn't, they didn't like the scheme that the Cowboys were running, but we saw him being in the efficiency role with Zeke and being really good. And then he gets the role. So for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And you know, that's kind of what, Tajay was being last year as being that efficient pass catching running back. So here we are. We're hoping for 50 50 split would be ideal, right? For both of those guys, but both can operate in an efficient way. So I don't, I don't see terrible, terrible, you know, decrease. We were getting uh Tajay mid seventh in our ADP. Um, so now we're, I think we're going to see a round two decline and I'll still buy in for that price because I think he's a really good player. In fact, at this point, I think Tajay Spears is a better player than Tony Pollard is. Um, you know, now he doesn't have ACL, so they say. So, uh, you know, got to yeah. take that for what it is. But um, Pollard was probably being slept on a little bit in this offseason. Pollard didn't look the same last year as he did the year prior either. So we'll kind of play that for what it is. Interesting signing for them. But J. Mike points out on kind of what they want to do on offense. You're getting Bill Callahan in there, mm-hmm. um, they, you know, coming from Cleveland. He had Hunt and... Uh, Chubb and you know he's they can throw it to the backs he's had a lot of different stops along the way and some and some pretty good offenses so um, what are your th- take here on on Spears because I know you're a big Spears guy too yeah I'm kind of I'm kind of right there with J Mike I, I think that this offense is is, is rebuilding it's going to be so young that it makes sense that they're going to run or lean heavy on the run game and Spears is only 22 years old right like he's a great uh, offensive player but I I I watched some film on him, but I didn't watch his passing grade, uh, pass protection grades, those kind of things. And so you bring in Pollard, who's a little bit older, a little bit more experienced to kind of offset Spears, um, you know, maybe maybe help help coach in that in that realm. It's not that he I think Pollard's 26 and Spears is 22. So it's, um, you know, not 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 that Pollard's old at, at, by any means, but he's he's been around and he and he knows the. He knows the deal at, at running back. So for me, I'm, I'm still I'm still on Spears. Um, I, I think that, um, you know, I'm, I'm I don't know. I I don't know if I'm still out there going going and buying them at this point, because I, I do think Pollard is better than, um, you know, last year at this time we were talking about Pollard and and um, uh, Alexander um, in, in Minnesota. And I was I was definitely on the Pollard side of that one because I, I do feel that Pollard adds some value. But like you said, there's a there's a little bit of unknown with that injury. Um, Spears ceiling got way too high for any buys now. So maybe I will go back on the Spears buy once, you know, the dust settles and people's people start to panic a little bit because I do think that that system um, is probably going to lean towards supporting two two running backs and in fantasy, if I can get if I can get a discount on 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 Spears going going forward again, he's only 22 years old. So like, I, you know, I might I might take that gamble in in season. But but for now, I think it kind of kills 
both of their values in, in my opinion as far as just a straight market value um yeah fa- fantasy production i think they're both going to be all right I, I, I again i i believe that they can um they could both produce decent numbers, but I think those decent numbers are, you know, when we talk about the best duos in the game um, right now, you know, uh, we were going to say Josh Jacobs and, and, um, <laughs> and, Jones. and Aaron Jones. Uh, we were talking about that in the, in the courts, but you know, Gibbs and, and Montgomery, you know, those are, those are top 12 fantasy producers in my opinion with the touchdown upside on Montgomery and, and obviously Gibbs is in his explosiveness. I don't think that's what you're getting in, in Tennessee. It's probably that light. So maybe top 15, top, 17 RB production is what you would expect from, from that particular offense uh, for, for both of them. But I do think that there's uh, going to be value there for, for, for both sides of it. So, yeah. And, and uh, in the chat here, we're talking about, uh, uh, they were talking about, sorry, um, my yeah, okay. froze up. Oh, here we go. Um, in the chat, we're talking about uh, Justin Jefferson. And yeah, we're not. I, I said that I was um, contemplating a, a pick um, earlier of 104 or in Olave and Justin Jefferson. Yeah, we're not we're not fading JJ no matter who goes in there. He's going to you know, he's going to definitely be. Um, he's definitely going to be in the top three as long as he's not injured. Even if he is injured points per game uh, a realm with whoever lands in that, in that spot there. But, um, but it's, it's just kind of, kind of interesting, the market market changes and and how it works. So um, anyway, got us on track, but, but yeah, yeah no, I'm, on the Justin yeah. Jefferson thing real quick, I'm, I'm, I was more pointing to does Justin Jefferson want to be there? Cause he needs a contract. So that, that could be a driving force of him trying to force himself out and going somewhere else. Um, because of not having a solidified quarterback position, there's no fade on Justin Jefferson. I'll take, um, I'll take Justin. Je- I'm, not, I'm not scared. Uh, well, th- so. there's no fade, but I think there's going to be a fade. So I think that there could you be. Know, there, there, or yeah, I guess there could be. Um, so some of some of these overreactive players, especially our our newer. Uh, from redraft players, you might be able to to to, to pocket some just uh, some Justin Jefferson for for cheaper than what you've ever been able to uh, right now. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that. But uh, to put a bow on Spears, I think you kind of said it, but I'll say he said it in a little bit different way. You were hoping for there was an RB one ceiling there uh, potential for Spears and the workload and the volume. Now it's kind of like I think you're 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 hoping for a split RB two from both of those guys, basically. You know. Yeah. So that's that's the part that hurts. And you, when the dust settles, we'll see where the value is, and we'll see if it's if if Spears is still something that you're trying to acquire. Um, I still think he'll win out, and hopefully it'll be 60-40 Spears um, in that duo. Uh, but we shall see. Uh, but the the hopes of the volume of of to the trajectory to get you to be that RB one um, is is a whole lot lower, and chances being a whole lot lower at this point. So, yeah. Um, Let's go to let's go to Swift going to Chicago. Of last of the big running back signings here, um, so that's interesting. You got Herbert in the last year of his deal. Roshan, no love for uh, no love for Roshan over there apparently. Yeah. Um, but you know Swift gets a pretty good deal there. I didn't I didn't think Swift. Uh, yeah, was, I did not was, see this. The market was going to be robust on him. I, um, could be great. I think the the Bears line has been steadily improving. Um, Mm -hmm. as we've been talking about how terrible they were to um, kind of moving forward. And hopefully they'll invest just a little bit more in that O-line. Swift is good. Swift is, you know, Swift is really good when, when the Eagles were, you know, clicking on all cylinders and there was, there was lanes to run in. He can really get going and, and, and do his thing. I, it's, I'm not, not hating on Swift by any means. Just seems like, I don't know, that, that that's not what the bears needed to do uh, for, for, football purposes didn't seem like swift was an immediate need uh for kind of what they were doing and where they're going um i don't know maybe you're worried about you wanted a better pass catcher for out of the backfield for for caleb or or if you're sticking with fields which at this point i don't i don't know how you're sticking with fields um so what are your thoughts here on on swift yeah i mean i i think it's a great great spot for swift um and like you said i'm I'm pretty surprised on the money um i mean he got the same contract uh at least on paper as as pollard and um i yeah i i think since uh since the bears lost montgomery i think they've been obviously been trying to find that that piece that you know that that kind of helps 
Um, again, same concept of pressure valve release, right? Swift is kind of he has the ability to be one of those players, not not to the extent, in my opinion, as Barkley um, right out the gate, but but he definitely has that ability to help a young quarterback with checkdowns. You know, is he, he has the ability to break up and 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 keep those linebackers in check and and um, or, 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 so his talent is there. I'm, I'm surprised at the dollar amount, but. I don't know, man. Chicago's always a, a, a mystical, mystical place for me until everything lands. You, you never know what they're gonna do there. It seems, and and yeah. so this one was a little bit, a little bit surprising. But um, you know, for for our bear Bears fans, man, I hope they, I hope they definitely have a plan in place and that they're, you know, that they they've got the ammunition now to be really competitive. That defense looked really good, um, you know, last year uh, towards yeah. the end. Yeah. Um, they they they've been putting it together. You know, Fields was looking good, and and obviously they're probably gonna move on from Fields. Um. In my opinion, I don't think it's because of, because I think it's because of contract more than it is because of player versus player. Um, you know, Williams versus uh, Fields. But um, but anyway, regardless, it, the, the, there's definitely going to be some movement there, and that offense is gonna it's gonna look different, um, no matter what, just because of the capital that they have. And so I, I it seems to me just with this signing, you know, obviously they've got DJ. Um, they signed, what was that last year? Or I think it was the beginning of last year. They signed Comet to an extension. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, seems you know, like, like they're going to potentially draft another wide receiver high. Seem, seems that way. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a fun, you know, fun, fast. I mean, fun, fast offense is kind of what I'm getting. Uh, the, the early, early day reads right now is just kind of like, it's going to be fun and fast and going to put it out there and put pressure on, uh, going to put pressure on other teams defenses because they believe in their defense. They could take some risks some shots, right. And maybe give up a midfield possession and, and still be okay because of their defense. So um, I, I like the, I, I like the idea, you know, and I'll probably warm up to it as we, as we go along and we hear more details and we see more pieces. Uh, I just think it was a little shocking to me because like you said, it feels like they have some, they had, they had some room to spend capital other, other places, but Hey, if they believe in Swift, man, good for them. Yeah, I just don't think that Herbert and and Roshan were a real problem that you had to address right this minute. But mm-hmm. you know, I don't I don't hate it from a fantasy perspective. We'll see how they divvy up that workload. It would seem that the way they're paying them is that that Swift will be their guy. Um, and you know, as we're going here, I don't want to keep just saying er- everything's good and all the fan. But it seems like for all of these fantasy values, everything right now has been pro. There's not a whole lot of con right now to fantasy values of these signings so far for the fantasy perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest negative is Aaron Jones right now, you know, yeah. obviously because he doesn't have a team um, that, that, that was probably the, the and Tajay a little bit. You and, know. Oh, and Tajay, sorry. Yeah. I missed that so, one. Um, mostly net positive right now. So that's good. Right. I like that. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's switch it over to the quarterbacks. We, we started with Kirk cause that was the biggest breaking news. Well, I just uh, want to need, touch one, one before ahead. we move on from running backs. I, I think the Gibson sign in New England is interesting. I like what they're doing there with Gibson. They re-sign Bourne. They're getting rid of Devontae Parker. You know, that that I feel like that's going to have some sneaky offensive fantasy relevance. It's not a major talking point right now, but I was interested to see where um, Antonio Gibson landed. Him him going to New England kind of offsets uh, Rashad Steven, uh, Stevenson. Ramondre. So Ramondre Stevenson's Rashad. I don't know. I was thinking Atlanta. Um, Stevenson, I, I, you know, I think that's going to be, um, I think that'll be a fun, fun little offense. And, and again, it's not going to get a lot of headlines in the, in the world of, especially right now, but, but I think that's a, that's a fun, fun spot for him. So, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I think maybe, maybe it was you that I was on the last Patreon episode that we did or something along those lines. Uh, we're, we're talking about how we can't, we can't really judge new England anymore. And there was right. another, the Seattle was the, you know, you can't really judge. It's a whole new era. We don't exactly know what we're going to before. It was like, Hmm, that can be sort of a wasteland a little bit for some fantasy assets from time to time, but it seems like they're, they're changing their mindset, changing how they're doing things. Seems like from all the reports out there that it's either could be a small trade back or we're going to take like a Jacoby Brissett or a veteran quarterback. And we're going to draft somebody at three and, the veteran's going to play for a little while. And, and I heard, I forget who else it was, but I mean, that's the path that the Patriots need to take, get a quarterback, yeah. bring him in, let him sit. You're, you're, you're not close to being great right now. So right. just 
give it a year, try to get all these pieces going. I like the Gibson signing. And, you know, I saw some people complaining about the Bourne signing. At the end of the day, it's not that much money. There are some incentives in there. But Bourne was a really he's the best player on your team last year offensively. <laughs> yeah. um, and Torres ACL, which is a bummer, but apparently they really like him up there. So he's a character guy. And, you know, he doesn't need to be your main attraction. That's your That was your problem before. But if he's your third or, you know, or second, then that's fine. You just need to bring in one more good guy and then get some more depth around him because I think Pop Douglas can play. I yeah. think uh, Bourne can play coming back from the ACL, but Bourne was, Bourne was sneaky decent. Just because he isn't one of the best guys in the league doesn't mean he stinks for your no. team build. Yeah, he's a um, fantasy wise. I think the fantasy guys, this is where they miss the mark. Is that like, you know, sometimes the the talk show host misses the mark because they're not deep enough in things. I think the fantasy guy gets too deep in some things. And it's like, no, Kendrick sure. Bourne's a good player. Like, yeah. uh, you know, and you're not paying him all that much when it really comes down to it to keep him around. You re-sign Hunter Henry. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, he's not sexy. There's nothing fun about Hunter Henry. But, you know, fantasy wise, he'll score you in premium. He'll give you 10, 12 points a game. Um, mm -hmm. if, especially if you can get a, a moderate, decent quarterback in there. Um, so you're going to, you know, you just got to, you got to build this thing out. Maybe Calvin Ridley ends up there. I'm not exactly sure what other, you know, if they're going to sign another big veteran. Or are they going to bring in some, some younger guys? We shall see, but the changing of the guard in new England, I like what Mayo is kind of doing and establishing and Hey, we're not going to sit around and be the, be the old new England. We're, we're reestablishing ourselves. So I think, I think that's a good point. I like the Gibson signing. He does something totally different than Ramondre does, although Ramondre is a pretty good pass catcher in his own right. He is, um, yeah. But they they can be two complementary players. It's maybe not my dream landing spot for Gibson, but I do like right. the fact that they went out and got him, and they're potentially planning this new kind of offensive attack of what they're going to do, and 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 maybe Gibson could be you know a decent plan in there. So I still think there'll be some good value on on Gibson. I don't think it'll rocket him up the board by any means. Like if he signed with, you know. Uh, Baltimore or uh you know the Texans or something might might shoot him up the board a little there but uh so yeah just like the fact that. that he was signed or well he obviously not signed officially but but talked about being signed today um before a lot of these other players tells me that he it feels like to me anyways that he's going to have more of a more more of a uh, an option uh, opportunity to produce there in, in New England so yeah I'm definitely liking that so anyway sorry I pivoted us pivot oh that's okay <laughs> away from uh from quarterback I think you were going yeah. with uh, Russ yeah we don't we don't have any fancy soundboard or graphics on here on the on the pleasure chest the public may end up seeing this one so um this is what we do over here we we have uh, some conversations but wanted to hop on it because we had a chance and so here we are yeah R Russ to the Rust to the Steelers is, you know, the big news that led the day off today was kind of rumblings the last uh, night or or so. And um, again, I think stylistically, um, I think this is a is a pretty good fit overall. Like I, I let it off with with this, but Rust didn't fit in what Atlanta wanted to do. Fields doesn't fit. Like Fields was an okay fit for pittsburgh but i think mike tomlin wanted a cheap guy that they didn't have to do anything with that that is a veteran that's been around um rather than them bringing fields in but with this new offense with arthur smith you know it seems like you can get a throwback to what russell once was like mm -hmm. hey we can let the defense dictate the pace of this thing we're gonna run the dog shit out of the ball you know the one negative i saw about this is that a lot of arthur smith stuff goes over the middle of the field which is not where russell has typically been uh, willing to throw the ball a ton. So that's mm -hmm. something you got to monitor and keep an eye on. And, you know, but what that also is going to Russell throws a fantastic deep ball. So you, yes. you cloud a bunch of stuff in the middle of the field there, that safety might have to stick over the top of the set uh, over the, uh, over top of the middle, because there's so much action in there. If Russell could show any ability to want to throw there um, just a little bit, but Pickens on those, on those deep outs feels like uh, or deep go balls, um, seems like a, a match made in heaven, but I could see Pickens getting frustrated with, you know, uh, Russ when he's having a bad game. So Russ mm -hmm. personality wise, doesn't feel like a fit for Pittsburgh, but it's veteran minimum money. That's perfect for them. They can continue to get build, do whatever they want around them. If Russ works, he, he, he works. If he doesn't, Oh, well, uh, one year maybe, deal. maybe you go Kenny Pickett again for a year, or maybe you're right back to where you were after this. I do, you know, some people are like, there's no competition. I think there's going to be a competition. Now, is it going to be Baker Mayfield versus Kyle Trask type com competition where they're kind of talking about it being a competition all year, but it's really right. not a competition. Um, I think that's probably more likely. Um, but what are your thoughts on, on Russell here? 
Um, I, I like the fit for us. I, I like the fit because of Tomlin mostly. Um, you know, I think, I think Tomlin is, is in my opinion, probably the best coach in the league is, um, for, for many things. One of those things being, being able to create a cohesive, um, locker room and, and just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I look at the weapons there. I look at what can be. I mean, Najee, you were talking about the run game. Um, you know, I think Russ needs a run game to be a decent deep ball passer. Like mm-hmm. most, I mean, that's not, I'm not breaking news here, but, but, right. but especially Russ, he can't throw over the middle um, that well. Um, but he does like to split the seams with the tight ends. So I feel like it, it, it definitely bumps up the tight end room there in Pittsburgh a little bit for me. You know, maybe Pat, Pat can, uh, um, uh, Firemuth can can get loose a little bit more, and um, I think uh, who's a uh, Washington drafted. A, uh, I know he's yeah. mostly been pass blocking, but that dude is a large target, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. But uh, Deontay Johnson is kind of like uh, you know if we if we facet this back to when Russ was a little bit more successful than what he how he played or how Denver played, um, you know, you look at Seattle. I think Deontay Johnson is kind of closer to Tyler Lockett <clears throat> in the in the sense of. He can definitely be all over the field, catch. He runs great routes. Um, like you, you already alluded to Pickens being that could be that deep ball. Um, DK seems to be like a deep ball specialist, but really it was Lockett had a lot of speed and, and, and deep ball necessity. So, so I think Pickens is a great um, contested catch type of player that, you know, Sutton, if you will, if we go to, to Denver, he's, he's obviously uh, to me, a lot more talented than Sutton, but that's sure. another discussion. Um, but but I mean, well, point is, it, it fits with uh, Russell's deep ball perspective. He doesn't throw over the middle a lot, but he does target the tight end, which Arthur Smith, obviously with Johnu last year, did a lot of that. So I, I like yeah. that connection there. I love the running game. I already like the running game. I I love it now with with Russ there uh, at the helm. And and I agree with you. I, I don't think Kenny Pickett is. Um, I think Kenny Pickett's better than Trask, and I think. Baker Mayfield is probably about where Russell Wilson is. So I think there may be a little bit stronger competition than in Tampa, but it's definitely Russ's it's definitely Russ's team to lose at this point yeah. when it comes to that. Um, Some people are just saying it's not really a competition. Russell would have never signed there. And I'm like, well, I mean, Russell's getting paid. There's not that I'm sure he didn't have that many suitors. Like, yeah. You know, I mean, he's got he's got to compete for something. Pittsburgh is not a place that's just going to fucking hand it to you. I can tell you right. that. Like, yeah, you know, and I, I saw some people saying that it's ridiculous. I don't think it's that ridiculous, but I don't think it's I think I guess my point with that competition was it really wasn't that much of a competition. If if Pickett no. plays out of his skull, then they might start Pickett. But yeah, you yeah. know, I, all, all off is like, well, Trask playing pretty good today. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. and you're going to get some of that from Pittsburgh. I think, but I think it's going to be Russell at the end of the day. Um, I think yeah. you can get that play action back and Najee and Warren are a great one two punch, mm-hmm. much like the Bears line playing a little bit. Steelers line at the end of the season playing uh, a good bit better. Najee was was looking really, really good at the end of the season. So I think all of those things really fit to outside of the middle of the field stuff where Arthur likes to scheme. Um, but you know, that's also needs to be an adjustment on his end of things. You know, you guys got to meet in the middle. Russell needs to throw a little bit over the middle to keep you honest. And then you need to scheme things, um, sort of to, to Russell's, uh, ability as well. You guys got to, got to meet a little bit, but play action defense running Russell on boots and kind of moving around and scrambling. Um, he will take a sack. He will get sacked. Um, yeah. and that's, that, that'll be the part that'll piss you off, uh, with him. But I just feel like, you know, this this Steelers team is starting off the season and, and a pretty net positive here. I think the competition will be good for Russ and Pickett, at least a, a, a competition air quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as far as what the Steelers want to be and do, it feels like Russell is, is potentially a good fit there. You know, I don't think Russell was awesome last year. The stats kind of tell you that Russell was, was better than you thought he was. But when you watch the games, it was pretty fucking stale the whole time. Yeah. It's also a factor of he uh, clearly that was not a match at all. Like those, those two mm-hmm. dudes couldn't be more different and the stylistic manner of their play as far as Denver uh, and um, drawing a blank on the coach's name right now. Um, Sean or, Sean, or uh Sean Payton. Sean Payton. Um, there we go. <laughs> they couldn't have weird. a different style of play of how they wanted. So you're trying to fit him. And I saw some people saying trying to fit a round uh, peg into a square hole with Russell and, and Arthur Smith. And it's like it's a whole lot closer of a of a hole than it was where he just was. Um, 
I agree. If he could yeah. just not turn it over a ton and not not be a bonehead, uh, Steelers have a pretty good organization, have a really good defense, offensive line getting better. I, I don't I don't hate it. I think it's a it's not the worst. I don't know what it'll do for Russell's value because I don't think anybody really cares. I think majority of people think Russell's dead, but he's a nice late round stab that that could get you through some tough times with your quarterback play. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, even though it's a one-year deal, like, I mean, I could see, I, I could see this being a pivot. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A, 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 there's a Y here, right? There's a Y road. Like, we're either going right. to go up the right path or the left path with with Russ, and so this is kind of a prove it deal for Russ. And and, um, but I, I think he's worth to me. He's worth the risk if you're in from a let's take a fantasy take real quick. If I if I'm a QB two away. Like I, I think Russ is pre- going to be pretty cheap, um, you know, uh, uh, this off season. And um, I think you could probably get away with sending a, a mid second for, for Russ um, at, at this point and, and at least to start the negotiation and, and uh, maybe not right today because he, you know, just signed and there's all the hype, but, but as we go along and as rookie rookie hype um, kicks in more and more, um, especially a, after the NFL draft, I think you can get Russ for a pretty good uh, veteran <laughs> veteran minimum from the fantasy perspective. And, and I, I think there's fantasy upside there. I still do. I mean, he doesn't have the wheels like he used to, but like you said, he throws a pretty good deep ball. He, he tends to, I mean, I know he had a little bit of challenge, but he, he tends to be okay with with not creating too many turnovers. And, yeah. and, and uh, you know, I know Najee is – is uh, Najee's going to help him, but so is um, – Warren. Uh, Warren, thank you. So was Warren. Warren, he he uh, produced uh, at, with Ken Walker. He you know he definitely did a lot of checkdowns there and and that. So um, anyway, point point being, I think I think he's going to be a good off season later after the NFL draft acquisition for for fantasy managers that are looking to compete. So yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, all right, let's let's do a couple more before we get out of here. Uh, Gabe Davis to Jacksonville uh, kind of mm-hmm. gives you that outside X receiver, the, the the outside guy that that they didn't really have a clear path to that in this past year. Um, yeah. They, they kind of had a lot of interchangeable pieces, which is fine, but and they had Calvin Ridley out there, which I think moving Calvin Ridley around a little more would have been beneficial, which I think they started to do at the end of the year. But mm-hmm. Gabe Davis, I think, serves a good purpose for Jacksonville. I mean, he is what yeah. he is, I think, at this point. Um, you could say leaving leaving – Buffalo, you're not going to get in a better situation, but you never know. Um, and I, I think, I think it's a good fit, NFL wise, football team wise, for for Gabe Davis and the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Christian Kirk is 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 and can be basically your pseudo number one who moves around a bunch and can do a bunch of different things. And and you know, clear difference when he's not on the field for them last year. Um, it was a yeah. huge loss for them. Uh, and, and Zay Jones has been pretty productive too. Wouldn't be surprised if you see him draft another wide receiver or bring in another lower level wide receiver a little bit. Parker Washington wasn't bad. So uh, Evan Ingram, you know, is, is a very good pass catcher in his own right. So um, I, th- I believe Gabe Davis is a, is a pretty decent blocker as well. Um, so helps them maybe take a step forward in the run game. What the big thing that I like that Jacksonville did was signing Mitch Morse, the center from Buffalo. Um, they brought him in because mm-hmm. they've been struggling with that position a little bit. And then they also signed Ezra Cleveland a day or two ago, which this line was just not good last year. They they a lot of injuries jumbled up, and that that's a big part of of the, if your if your line is is struggling, you're typically going to struggle. Um, and Lawrence was beat up and dinged up, and people are out on him. So, I think Jacksonville making making okay moves here. At least I don't know. I'm assuming Mitch Morse is going to be the starting center. They've had the same starting center, I believe, for the last three years, um, but not great. So I think. Morse comes in. I think he only signed a one-year deal, but we'll see. And then some depth with Cleveland to, uh, you know, I don't think he'll be a starter, but we shall see, uh, to be able to withstand some some injuries, which is going to be a part of the game. And I think it's big to have those utility guys who you can come in and and clog up the holes uh, for a little while and, until your big boys can get back. So I'd like to see Jacksonville keep focusing on that offensive line, maybe bring in another uh, wide receiver of some sort. But uh, I like I like kind of where their head's at right now. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think Gabe Davis, this is a pretty good spot for him. Um, I fantasy wise, I, I tend to stay away from that type of player, you know, the Deshaun Jackson esque type of type of um, 
build boomer on bust. my team. Yeah. yeah, boomer bust type of thing on my, on my my personal teams. But I, I that that doesn't mean he doesn't have fantasy value on on lots of teams. So I think I think it's great. I think it's for me it's a better fit than Ridley was. I feel like Ridley just didn't quite. Um, he's a great uh, route runner. He got open in, in lots of ways. But I think with with Lawrence, they needed some more pressure downfield, and this is definitely going to give that, um, you know, going to give that. And then you already said it, Christian Kirk. I mean, <clears throat> oh man, I'm excited for Christian Kirk. <laughs> like, yeah. we'll see what else they do. But but as of right now, you know, um, as you know, I'm always been a bit big Kirk guy, and and uh, the team just looks different with him on the field, man. I I, I you know like. He, he just, I don't know. He, he's better than what a lot of people think he is. And, uh, and so, so we'll see how it shakes out, but I, th- I think it's a, it's a positive for Kirk. I think it's a positive for Evan Ingram. It doesn't really take away his targets. Um, and, yeah. uh, and, and, and I, and I agree with you. I think they're probably, they're probably one more, one more player away. So we'll see what that looks like, whether it's a rookie or, or somebody like a, you know, like a, I don't know, Curtis Samuel type of, you know, type of player or something like that. But, uh, yeah. but who knows? I mean, they could, I mean, the other one that I think would fit well, and I know it's similar style, but I mean, if they went out and put Hollywood on this team too, I mean, you got Hollywood, Gabe Davis and Christian Kirk. I feel like that would be a pretty decent trio to, to, yeah. to put, put in front of Lawrence slash Mac Jones. <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't, we haven't seen, there's a couple things still lurking out there that we haven't seen splash into play yet. Fields yeah. being one of them. Um, yep. Hollywood Browns, potentially one of them. I kind of hope Hollywood goes back to the Cardinals, but if if not, um, certainly could be a high a high value target for some people needing some depth uh, at wide receiver and a, and a good starter. Um, I think before we close up shop, obviously Pittman got the franchise and then got extended. That's great. Nothing really changes there. Pittman's locked in there. I, I love that. Uh, like Pittman a lot. And then T Higgins gets the franchise tag. Nothing really changing there. He said he's kind of unhappy. Of course he is. I don't think anybody wants to be on the tag and play on the tag. Right. He's probably going to be a Cincinnati Bengal for the next year, and they'll see kind of how it goes. So didn't want to spend a terrible amount of time on him. But I did want to talk about that locket restructure. Um, when we we're You and I were messaging back and forth and some in the Patreon about – or the Discord, rather, about – uh, the value of JSN. So Lockett obviously had a long deal. They restructured it. He's 31 going on 32. Yep. Um, still still playing pretty good football. Um, you're not just going to let a, a guy who's still playing well and, and you know, been loyal to the squad. I don't think you should have let a cut him by any means. There was some maybe hopes from the JSN hive that maybe that would happen. And I think right now the JSN people are getting tagged as, oh, this isn't good for the JSN truthers. Like, motherfucker, who wasn't a JSN truther? Like, I don't mm-hmm. really understand – what happened here like everybody was in on jsn and dangling on the nuts and then all of a sudden because he doesn't come in and and be a top five receiver right away there's no way he'd be good because he didn't hit these stupid fucking thresholds that you're laying out the x amount of guys you go oh oh, if you didn't hit this then you you, your chances of finish having one top 24 season is down to this you know just fucking stop man the guy's a good player he got hurt to start the season He's he then came in and had DK and Lockett. It was just an unfortunate situation that he got drafted there. Now, if that's if, if you want to just say, hey, I'm not out on the player. I'm just out on the situation. Fine. But like, stop acting like he can't like we're figured out if he can fucking play or not. That's the shit that drives me insane. Yeah. Um, and we'll see what happens here. Like you said, you can't judge. This, you can't judge the the um, the Patriots anymore. We can't judge the Seahawks anymore. Now we got Grubb in there running, running the offense. I think we're going to see quite a bit different offense. Now you're hoping that you'll see a bit more three wide receivers. And the fact that JSN maybe can't earn some more time on the field, but to say that he's just going to over it, Lockett's not some, you know, it's, oh, because he didn't overtake Lockett and DK, he sucks. Like, what are we, yeah. huh? Like, just because you and your fantasy team draft Lockett in the 13th round because he's old, he does it. He's awesome. He's a great right. player. Like, I, it's just, it's crazy to me um, that, that people will get this far out on the wide receiver one from a <laughs> class ago because he didn't come out and, and crush. Uh, I just, it's wild to me. Now, should his value drop a little bit with Lockett potentially basically seemingly being there for two more years? Yes, you you probably need to let the, the market let him drop down a little bit and still buy in. It's okay. Like just have some patience, which I know nobody has. So anyway, I'm sure I have a million other things to say, but I really wanted to get it from your perspective because you're a Seattle guy. 
um, and and see kind of what's going on out there, how you read it. It just it seems just crazy that that you're because I get it. He's not going to help you out seemingly and be your wide receiver one immediately. So his fantasy value should trickle down a little bit, but he shouldn't be dead by any means. That's just crazy. So maybe maybe I'm wrong. What what do you think? It's not fucking take lock either. That's a stop it. Like you're like you're so much <laughs> fucking better than it. I was take lock because I already moved on. Like bro, you've been presented no new evidence. Like yeah. none, none. They what they ran, they threw a bunch of screens to him and ran him out of the slot. Like and he wasn't good. And when he went outside, he was a lot better. Uh, you know I, what? Like what do you? They, they're running bad plays. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like he, he kind of alluded to it in the in the Super Bowl interview. He's like, ah, yeah, yeah, they're off. He's a, he's a nice yeah. guy. Like <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, no, you're you're good, man. You, you've 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 wrapped it up pretty well. I mean, so let's just talk about the Lockett contract. Um, he was set to have a higher cap hit than his actual salary this year, just the way it was structured. So he was either going to get restructured or or cut. People were leaning towards cut, but I was leaning towards being restructured because he's a veteran presence in a in a in a change of system, right? And and he's a he's a good dude. So um, you you know, we don't want to hear that or we don't talk about it a lot, but there's a third part to fantasy that that I talk about from time to time, which is the 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 character aspect, right? You've got the stats, you've got the the film watching, and then you've got a character thing. And we're not I'm not a psychologist, but I you know, but just watching and obviously being a lot closer to the Hawks than I am to other NFL teams, I know that Lockett is integral in, in the fact of the culture. So so just from that perspective, I didn't necessarily think he was going to move on. I figured he'd get restructured. I don't know if I thought it would be for the amount of time he did, but but that. That being said, uh, I think it's a good deal for the Seahawks. I think it's a good deal for Lockett. And when it comes to JSN, man, I just I just don't get it. I mean, um, you can't have take lock if it's only been a year for starters, right? If you're telling me that I have take lock, you're coming from redraft. Like I just <laughs> I don't <laughs> from a fantasy right. side. I, I did. Well, they I just, talk to you like you're dumb and you yeah. have take lock, and I'm like, yeah. what, what? We just scouted this guy. We decided he was this good. Yeah, didn't really give us any reason to be like he didn't come in the in the in the um into the league and look like you know the monsters lost their power or something like he really? like all of a sudden wasn't like he just really he had an unfortunate set of circumstances and then there was he dropped a couple touchdowns too like he could have even had a better year of kind of what he did from from perspective of of you know that it wasn't awesome but it still could have been better and there was times on the field where he did look really good i could well, just i don't know well he hasn't had a preseason for one cuz he had a hurt wrist right so he wasn't playing all the all the drills he wasn't doing all the all the things that they they would want him to do in the old regime's um world he he started to look better as the season went on um I, it's just i i don't know people give garrett wilson a pass because aaron rodgers went down but like I, I, I and I know that Garrett Wilson had a lot more targets and he was a, a center f- focal point of the offense. And Chris Olave has been down because of of Derek Carr. And the reason why I'm bringing them up is because obviously there's a connection there. But it's like, like I, I just don't understand how anyone could be out on JSN at this point. Like yeah. you said it best. Like yeah, he probably won't be wide receiver five overall this coming <laughs> coming year without you know ma- magic happening or or bad things happening for the Seahawks. Uh, so I don't want that. But but he he's not like out of the discussion. This isn't like. This isn't, I, I mentioned his name earlier. This isn't a, a Devonte Parker, you know, like a fifth year breakout in my opinion. I, I, I still think like he's so young. He's, he's so talented. We liked him. He had a high value score. We, as the fantasy community liked him. So, so to, so to jump out on him uh, and, and just, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's frustrating in ways. I, I, I was messaging with you on. I think we it, this was in just text message, but I said, "Man, am I getting so old that uh, the game's just passing me by? Am I missing something here?" And, and you guys were talking me off the ledge because it's you know sometimes it's hard when you're the the fan. I, I tend to not draft a lot of Seahawk players because I overvalue them because mm-hmm. they're a Seahawk, right? And so I I tend to actually lean probably in, in you know if if I was the coach and my son was on the team, I'd be harder on my son, right, than than right. others because of, because of that. So that's same sim, similar concept. Concept. But I mean, I, I just can't let the 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 slight on JSN go away. I mean, the, yeah. if you watch, um, I think it was the last game of the season and the second to last game of the season. I mean, he had a, a route on the outside, uh, the right side of the field. He was 
you know, uh, I think it was about 23 yards down, 20, 25 yards down. He caught it with one hand. Uh, it's, a, it's a highlight play, right? But he, he catches it with one hand, keeps both feet in bounds. His body control is just absolutely amazing. It's a big spot in the game. And you're telling me that, like, he, he's washed or he's not, you know, he's not good because he can't yeah, beat yeah, out yeah. Lockett, who is – massively undervalued like right. I, I just i don't know man i just yeah I, I i get frustrated with it but then i'm like oh screw it okay i'll, I'll take all the jsn discounts you want to give me i'll take all the jonathan taylor because jonathan taylor's old and and we don't want to you know we don't want to yeah. deal with him fuck it i'll well, take we just, all we that for, we forgot <laughs> that he was one of those three four backs in the league that can do what the elite of the elite do and put up yeah. insane numbers in bunches so he's a value right now you know yeah yeah, I, I'll I'll take all that value all day, man. And and and, and I don't know. Maybe maybe I am wrong. Maybe 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 Reed in in Green Bay is is better than JSN. But I, I you know like that was one of the discussion points. And I, I just I just can't I can't get behind it, man. I no. can't I can't discount my mine and and the people that I trust evaluations after one year, especially knowing what um with a little bit more you know focus on it and and, and some context okay. and some context and and then just knowing the the locket deal. Like, I mean, he, his, it's probably a $13 million cap hit down from 20 something million. You know, they were going to restructure in my opinion. I don't think they were, it was either going to, they were going to restructure or he was going to retire. Those were the only two options. I right. don't think they were going to cut him. And so, yeah. so to me, it wasn't too big of a surprise. Um, but again, I'll like if, if you believe in um, JSN, like I do, then, then, you know, I let the haters hate and I'll just, you know, everybody can be, I, I love, I love when everybody has all these uh, great, smart, massive takes, you know, mm. and, and, and some of them pay off. But, you know, I, I'm still I play this game to win championships. I don't necessarily play it to have my team the sexiest roster. Right. Well, sometimes I think that's where we're at right now. Yeah. A lot of the times. Sometimes and I get it, man. In hand, you know, and, 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 and it's exciting, man. It's so exciting. You look at the Rams and the real NFL. You look at the Rams and and them going out and winning that Super Bowl and then having some some struggle. You know, and, and now they've got a new team and that's exciting. You know, they got Puka and they got Kyron and, you know, all these names are exciting. But I can guarantee you that, like, they wouldn't trade that Super Bowl for anything, you know. No. And, and and the same thing if you're in a, in a competitive league, man, like the, you, if you're holding the championship, it's like they, that that isn't going away. Your name's staying on your trophy or your plaque or or, right. or, or the minds of all your your opponents for for as long as that league's going to be around. So. Yeah, anyway, I'll get off my just, soapbox, but well, that, that, well, no, that's I think I think you're right, and I think that well, we've just gotten to a point where there's enough people talking about fantasy, and I understand. Like, look, the whole idea is is capitalizing on value and the market and all those things, and and you don't want to get caught with your pants down with guys who are dying on your roster and the value is going down. But at the same time, I still want to win, so it's just seemingly has been turning more and more into a beauty contest of. And hey, like once, like I said, I get it. Like I want these valuable pieces on my team so I can move around and do different things to get myself in the best position to win and not spend a terrible amount of time just completely tearing down and rebuilding. Um, yeah. You want to be kind of like the Rams. You want to go in, you want to make some trades, you want to win, you want to be down for a year, bring in some other guys. And then in, in a year or two, be like, all right, Hey, we're right back here now. Right. You know, let's go. Um, you know, there's a part where I'm bringing in a bunch of picks and there's a part where I'm probably getting rid of a bunch of picks and that those ebb and flow depending on what my team's doing. And, and of course I want, you know, to be, stay on top of, you know, you got to change with the time. So I know wide receivers are more valuable right now. So that in drafts, I'm typically going to draft more wide receivers unless you're giving me ridiculous value on running backs. And then I'll still take them uh, cause I can win with them. Um, right. So, you know, I think that's there, there is a, a point to that, but I just feel like we are starting to get to the point where, everybody has an opinion and, and you, your roster is like, it's gotta be this thing that like is coveted by all these young wide receivers and this, this, and yeah, that's how I like to start my team so I can move off and build a team that can actually win. Um, because I know that's what the league is mostly going to want. They're going to want these younger wide receivers and uh, quarterbacks and all that shit. And so then I can pivot to getting players that will actually score me points and win and not just be like, Oh yeah, they're not going to lose value over the next three years. Obviously the position you want to be in is be competitive for multiple years and then really never rebuild, but that's not really ever going to be the case. You're going to have to eat yeah. some shit sometime. Um, so uh, I think yep. that's a good way to, to wrap this up. You got anything else to say before we go? I really got to pee. Oh, well, in that case, let me slow down. <laughs> no, I think that's pretty much it. I think that there's nothing major that came in. Giants are looked like they're going to sign Singletary while we were talking. Nice. Uh, I'm sure there's some other other things that are going to happen, like but it, I don't see anything. Uh, 
nothing nothing major's broke but uh yeah man thanks for thanks for hopping on and and uh and talking about this i i yeah i, uh, I had some time today you had some time today i figured yeah. we could get a jump on it and there'll be much more uh expounded upon conversation here of of kind of the ins and outs but this was our just kind of our initial reaction and we had some time so was uh was fun to do it so appreciate you guys and we'll uh we'll catch you on the next one peace peace